Josh Friedman here in Bonnie Luka, Bosnia. I'm joined by Nika. She's behind the camera at the moment and she will be providing commentary shortly. I hope you can hear me over these church bells. We are in the center of town in Bonnie Luka. This building right here is the president's office. It is not, though, the presidency of Bosnia. No, Banja Luka is the capital of Republika Srpska. It is an autonomous entity within the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In late 1995, as the Bosnian war was coming to an end, there was an agreement signed in Dayton, Ohio. That agreement divided the new country of Bosnia into two entities, Republika Srpska, the Serb entity, and the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Federation is primarily inhabited by Bosniaks and Croats. That agreement was signed in December 1995. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary of the Dayton Agreement and things are still a little shaky here. The man who runs this building behind me is named Milorad Dodik. He is the president of Republika Srpska and a controversial figure. Dodik has been threatening secession from Bosnia and he's also promised to hold a referendum that would challenge the authority of the Bosnian court and prosecutor's office as well as an international body that oversees the country under the Dayton agreement. Now, Nika and I have been going through the streets of Banja Luka. We have been asking locals a variety of questions, but primarily, do you want to remain within Bosnia? If not, do you want Republika Srpska to be an independent country, or would you like it to join Serbia? We have also been asking people for their opinion on Mr. Dodik. Now, Nika, it is your time to shine. I'm going to grab the camera, and you're going to share with us what we've been finding around town. And first, I'll give you a little view of this Orthodox cathedral from which you just heard those bells. Uh, tell me a little about. Tell me a little bit about that well, cathedral to start. That cathedral is called the Christ the Savior Church. It's the oldest church here, it's aged 500 years old. It was previously destroyed during the previous war and it's just finished its rebuilding and reconstruction. The same as the mosque around here, this church has exquisite history and really beautiful on the inside. I would recommend anyone who visits Banja Luka to take a peek at this wonderful church. Okay, thanks for the plug. Now let's talk politics. Well, as you mentioned, we asked a bunch of locals of what they think of Republic of Srpska going through a secession, being an independent country or joining Serbia or preferably be, a Bos be with Bosnia. We had much contradicting opinions from various sources. Some supported the idea of an independent country while others feel their nationality, their innate spirit is Serbian. They feel themselves as Serbian and not connected to Bosnian culture, towards Bosnian heritage. So there are people who prefer to be an independent country, while others who prefer to be part of Serbia. At the same time, we also heard opinions where people would love to stay with Bosnia. I hope you agree with that, Joshua. What do you say? Well, I was surprised. We spoke primarily with young people, and we thought that it was going to be an older demographic that would be more in favor of secession and on top of that more in favor of reuniting with Serbia. But it was my take that most of the people we spoke to who were young were actually in favor of <coughs> secession. And there were a fair amount of those people who were on top of that were all for joining Serbia. Exactly, and we, I think you noticed yesterday during the basketball session, everyone was supporting for Serbia as it as if it were their home country and their homeland, which was kind of surprising for us. Gotta say that. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's going on today. Yesterday was the beginning of the European Basketball Championships, and Serbia defeated Spain, which I guess was, I guess it was an upset, but this isn't a basketball exactly. uh, broadcast. But, yeah, we're in Bosnia, and I couldn't help but notice that everyone is rooting and screaming for, for Serbia. Serbia. Exactly. And then, on top of that, why don't we point out these flags that... Well, are on the 
presidency here, the this Republic the of Srpska presidency. Republic of Srpska flag, which the only thing missing, the Serbian part which is missing from it is the emblem, the Serbian emblem which stays in the middle of the flag. Other than that, every part of the Serbian flag is there right now. Well, on the other, other part of the topic, when speaking about Dodik, we had a lot of contradicting opinions, a lot of different opinions actually. There were some who said Dodik was a strong figure, the strongest figure they have as a politician, while others said that he was corrupt and they dislike him. And we are standing right in front of Dodik's home right now, while his best friends just kicked us out of the pavement in front of his home building, as we were not allowed to stand there supposedly. So what do you say, Joshua? Do you think he's a strong figure as a politician? Uh, I'm not so sure he actually lives in there and that these guys are his best friends. Um, I'm going to zoom in on them briefly. Uh, but yeah, they weren't too friendly of us. <coughs> Dodik is definitely a man who comes across as a strong leader here. He's polarizing and he he's actually irked uh, Vucic, Alexander Vucic, the Prime Minister of Serbia, has even come out against this referendum that Dodic has been proposing. So he, uh, he is a strong personality, a strong character, and very polarizing. The international community, being it mostly the West, is quite opposed to his agenda, while Russia is actually quite Supporting. supportive of him. So, so far, this is what we figured out from Banja Luka, the Republic of Srpska. Next stop, we are heading towards Sarajevo, the Federation of Bosnia. So, there's going to be a whole new twist and a whole new different perspective there. So, till next time, we'll come up with more surprises. Bye-bye.